Now I can announce I won't be a candidate for president in 2020. More of a 2050 guy. Donald Trump is now officially, officially running for a second term in 2020, which is funny because even though Trump's rally in Orlando, Florida is touted as the formal kickoff of his 2020 campaign, it's been very, very clear to anyone residing on planet Earth for these last few years that Trump has been running for a second term from the second he won his first term. That's almost literally true. He filed his official re-election campaign committee with the Federal Election Commission on January 20th, 2017. And yes, for you history buffs out there, that is the same day he was sworn in as the 45th president of these United States. By June 2017, yes, 40 months out from his 2020 race, Trump had already held a fundraiser to collect cash for his re-election campaign. That event was held at Trump's hotel in Washington, because of course it was, and raised $10 million, according to the Republican National Committee. And not for nothing, Trump refused to let reporters come into that fundraiser to cover even a portion of his remarks. Quote, it's a political event, and they've chosen to keep that separate. Then Deputy White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said by way of explanation, hmm. By the end of 2018, which was not even halfway into Trump's first term, he had already raised more than $67 million and spent almost $56 million, all for an election that was almost two full years away. Now, since then, Trump's money machine has continued to chug on. As of March 31st, Trump's 2020 campaign had collected almost $98 million and had just short of $41 million left in the bank to spend. So you ask, how does that compare to past presidents? I have the answer. At the end of 2002, George W. Bush had raised $3 million in his first two years as president and had just under $4 million in the bank. Barack Obama, at the end of 2010, had raised $4 million and had $2 million left to spend. So yeah, Trump is doing things uh, you know, a little differently. And not just on the money front either. Trump named Brad Parscale as his campaign manager way back in February 2018, nine months before the midterm elections and not even halfway through his own first term. And Trump unveiled his 2020 campaign slogan, Keep America Great, way back in March 2018. Now Trump has since backtracked on that pledge, saying that his slogan may be the same as the one he used during his winning 2016 bid, which of course is Make America Great Again. The drama, oh, how will this turn out? Stay tuned. What's sort of remarkable is not that Trump is and has been running for re-election for a while now, but that there was actually a time when people thought he might not run. Trump himself did fuel some of that speculation by openly musing about how great his life was before he came to the White House. I do miss my old life. This, I like to work, so that's not a problem, but this is actually more work. And then there were the reports in early 2018 that Trump wasn't holding many meetings and was starting his days in the White House later and later. Reports that kept the he ain't going to run again rumor mill churning. And with the benefit of hindsight, that speculation all seemed sort of silly. And in truth, if we're being honest here, me and you, it was silly even back then, and here's why. Trump has, throughout his entire life, viewed himself as an outsider. He sees himself as someone with his face perennially pressed up against the glass door Last door, to an exclusive club that will not let him in. Think of it like this. His father, Fred, was a developer in Queens, but not Manhattan. When Trump began building in Manhattan, he wasn't accepted into the old money circles and the clubs those people frequented. So he built his own clubs and put his name on them. When he came to Washington thinking about running for president at the 2011 White House Correspondents' Dinner, he was relentlessly mocked for that by comedian Seth Meyers. And even President Barack Obama joined in with jabs at Trump's embrace of birtherism. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> no one is happier, no one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? <laughs> what really happened in Roswell? And where are Biggie and Tupac? Now, here's a longish sidebar. Prior to actually running for president in 2016, Trump had talked about running for decades. 
In 1988, Trump talked about running for president, but passed. In 2000, he actually kind of sort of ran for the Reform Party nomination, but dropped out amid tensions within the Reform Party. Ten years after that, he was back to openly considering a run for president as a Republican, but announced he wouldn't run in 2012 in May 2011. Now, seen through that face pressed up against the glass lens, Trump's 2016 victory was not just a political triumph, but a personal one too. He had finally shown all those people who wouldn't give him the time of day that he was smarter and better than them. Now they'd have to acknowledge him. And not just that, they'd have to kowtow to him. He was the president after all, and they weren't. Now the evidence of that I showed him mentality is anywhere you look in the Trump presidency. Here, for example, is Trump from a rally in North Dakota during the 2018 midterm. I meet these people. They call them the elite. These people. I look at them. I say, that's elite. We got more money. We got more brains. We got better houses, apartments. We got nicer boats. We're smarter than they are. And they say, the elite. We're the elite. You're the elite. We're the elite. Now, does that guy willingly walk away from being the center of attention in the country and the world? Does he bow out of the seat of power voluntarily? Does he decide to just, you know, <laughs> call it quits? Of course he doesn't. Let me reiterate that. Of course he doesn't. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.